In a surprising turn of events, Biden eroded some of the positive outcomes of this meeting by referring to President Xi Jinping as a dictator during a press interview just hours after it happened. Hi friends, hello and welcome to another video. Xi Jinping and Joe Biden's meeting during the APEC 2023 uh, summit yielded a series of public agreements and communiques. But the truth of the matter is that these results were the product of months and months of negotiations between the two countries. Important figures such as Blinken, uh, Kerry, Yellen, Raimondo, and even Henry Kissinger made trips to Beijing in the lead up to Xi Jinping's visit to California. They paved the way for over 20 ratified agreements across various crucial issues. The most critical agreement, in my opinion, revolved around Taiwan, uh, fentanyl, military communications, and climate cooperation. Xi's affirmation of seeking peaceful reunification with Taiwan, not an invasion, was a notable statement. Although certain groups like mainstream media will likely try to twist the message for their own interest. This may also not sit very well with those who profit from selling weapons to Taiwan. But the Biden administration really has very little to say in that matter. They're their own corporations. The agreement to increase control over illegal fentanyl is a starting point, but I am a strong believer that a broader war on addiction is what's actually necessary in the United States. Despite fentanyl's legitimate medical uses, high demand fuels gangs' illicit supply, and the fate of addicts and the homeless, especially in places like San Francisco and California in general, remains uncertain. Well, the California government did a lot. They made a lot of efforts to address homelessness and cleanliness. It is unclear whether these changes will prove lasting. Resuming military communication is crucial, given the presence of American military assets near China's coastlines on a daily basis. Pelosi's prior visit to Taiwan had severed an important line of communication, making it essential to restore this link for any potential incidents in the region. On the matter of climate change uh, cooperation, it's in the best interest of all parties to work together toward energy solutions that address the ongoing climate crisis. However, I am skeptical that sanctions on Xinjiang's polysilicon industries will be lifted, despite the significant role that these four factories play in producing materials for solar panels. Unfounded forced labor accusations have hindered international efforts to adopt solar solutions more widely. In a surprising turn of events, Biden eroded some of the positive outcomes of this meeting by referring to President Xi Jinping as a dictator during a press interview just hours after it happened. While the Chinese constitution does describe China's form of government as a dictatorship of the proletariat, the negative connotation that is attached to the term is always exploited by certain entities like mainstream media and pundits. Moreover, while we hear much about the Xi Biden meeting, it is noteworthy that APEC encompasses 21 economies. The real determinants of global development, however, lie in the dealings between CEOs with vested interests in China. That's what we saw at that gala. The fact that America's top business leaders were invited to that gala dinner with President Xi is a significant indicator that attempts at de-risking or decoupling are perhaps nothing more than protectionist strategies by the US government. The clear demonstration of support for China's future by the world's business leaders may have ruffled certain feathers as evidenced by the reaction of Raimondo right here, who appeared dismayed by the applause for President Xi. This serves as a reminder that the global landscape is shifting and anyone failing to acknowledge this fact may find themselves left behind.